how to design and build a Vitus bow pro system. In this video we will show you how to select the correct bow thruster for your project, but we'll also go into the details of the control panels, how the network works connecting the control panels with the bow pro, how to select the correct battery bank. Now we're going to go for an interesting installation. This is a 24 volt thruster to generate enough thrust, but the ship itself runs on 12 volts. So the starter engine, uh, all of the navigation system runs on 12 volt, but we need a 24 volt thruster. Now with the Vitus Bow Pro series, you can do that. We are going to feed the Bow Pro with 12 volt, and the Bow Pro will uh, convert that into 24 volts to charge a dedicated battery bank. In the end, we're even going to add a stern thruster just to show you how the installation works. Vetis has a couple of different families of thrusters. Now, to help you choose which thruster is fit for your project, there's a special table dedicated in the catalog to do this, uh, which is this table. Table works on ship's length. If you are in the metric, start from the top. This is, for instance, a blue line for an 18 meter boat, draw a line straight down. If you measure in feet, start at the bottom, draw a line straight up. And all of the boxes that are touched by the blue line are fit for this project. I'm going to zoom in a bit on the table. So again, 18 meters on top, blue line down. All of the boxes that are ticked by the blue line, that are touched by the blue line, are fit for our project. But keep in mind that the ones on the right-hand side of the table are the more powerful options, also available, uh, useful for bigger boats. And the ones near the bottom are on the weakish side. They're powerful enough, but use your common sense in selecting one. If the project you're working on is a power boat, a high-speed boat, it's a low profile, not a lot of windage, speed boats typically don't want a lot of weight in the bow, then it makes sense to go for the lower powered options. But typically with a bow thruster to go up in range is, uh, is a good idea. Keep in mind that the Bow Pro B series is also proportionally controlled. So even if you have a thruster which is almost too powerful, you can just generate a little bit of thrust instead of full power. All of the boxes that are ticked by the line are fit for the project and the color of the boxes indicates which family of thrusters you can use. Now all of the yellow and the red ones are the DC thrusters, which are uh, DC powered thrusters, so they run with carbon brushes. Carbon brushes generate dust, so if you have a lot of runtime, quite a lot of dust is generated, you need to do maintenance. DC thrusters are not very efficient engines anymore, so they tend to overheat after two or three minutes and then they suddenly switch off. And the main issue with DC engines is it's uh, full power, it's yes, full thrust or no, no proportional control. Within the DC family, we have two options as well, which is the ignition proof, the fully encased ones that you can see on top of this image, and also the retractable version. The retractable one is great for sailboats who don't want the additional drag from a thruster. You can retract them fully into the hull so you still have a smooth proof profile. Also very useful for boats that have to operate in very shallow areas, you can retract the thruster, but they are still DC thrusters with carbon brushes which need maintenance and generate a bit of dust. We also have a line of uh, hydraulic thrusters. Hydraulic thrusters are great if you already have hydraulics on the boat, for instance for fishing gear, uh, for cranes, windlasses, items like that. Then it makes sense to also run the bow thruster on a hydraulic pump. Bow thrusters as an option can be pro proportionally controlled, so 10%, 50%, 100% thrust, instead of on-off. Uh, the great thing about hydraulics is that they've got a virtually unlimited runtime, but it only makes sense to use a hydraulic thruster if you have hydraulics on the boat anyway. The modern choice is the Bow Pro. Uh, it's an AC engine, no carbon brushes anymore, fully proportionally controlled from zero to 100%. Because they're so efficient, it's a virtually unlimited runtime between six to 10 minutes, and usually even longer for most models. And after those 10 minutes, once they start running a little bit hot, they won't overheat, they will just go down in power slowly, so no sudden surprises there. They also protect the battery bank. If the voltage gets too low and your battery starts being damaged by solvatation, it will well, not completely switch off, but generate less and less power. Uh, this is the, the, well, basically the standard Bow Pro. At the bottom, uh, you can see an image of the rim drive. The rim drive runs on the same, basically, uh, energy package, but it's an extremely silent option. So if you operate in ecologically sensitive areas where you don't want underwater noise, the rim drive is a good choice. Think of patrol boats for police, customs, 
uh, will operate in stealth mode. The rim drive is a very quiet thruster. For our example project, uh, if we followed the blue line down, there were four options that we can fit in our project. The Baobi 1110, the 130, the 150 and the 180. Now, to help guide you narrow down the choices, just look up the specifics of these thrusters. Now, again, the 110 and the 130 were on the bottom end of the scale, not really that powerful. Uh, but one page uh, further in the catalog, it shows you all of the specifics. Tunnel diameter, uh, useful stuff for installation. We are going to go for the smart choice, a slightly more powerful. So we're going to look at the specifics of the 150 and the 180. The 180 is the interesting one, well the 150 as well of course, but the 180 says 24 slash 48 volt. 48 volt is a voltage which you will see more and more in the future because of electric boats. 48 volt is still a relatively safe voltage to run equipment on. Uh, it's a powerful option. So now we have a line of thrusters fit to directly fit into a 48 volt boat. The 24 volt means that the Bow B180 uh, is fed with 24 volts and it converts that to 48 volt to charge a dedicated battery bank. Now we have a 12 volt boat, so we're going to look at the specifics for the Bow B150, which says 12 slash 24 volts. It means that we can feed the Bow Pro 180 with 12 volts. It will change that, convert it into 24 volts to charge a dedicated battery bank. So the Bow Pro runs on 24 volts dedicated battery bank, but we will charge it with 12 volt through the built-in converter. Uh, now, well, we've basically decided on the thruster size, so now it's time to start looking at the cables and the battery bank. We've got a page for that in the catalog as well. How to select the correct size battery bank? Well, this table tells us, if we follow the line for the 180, uh, what kind of amps it uses, so you know how to select the fuse uh, and the main switch size, and it tells us how large should the battery bank be. Now the battery bank says two times 170 amps, two times because we need to generate 24 volts. So it's one battery bank of two batteries of 170 amps, and two times 12 volt is of course 24 volt to power the thruster. To charge the battery bank, we need a 12 volt line, sorry, I forgot one bit, which is cable thickness. Um, of course, the Bow Pro B has to be connected with a dedicated battery bank by cables. Try to keep those cables as short and as thick as possible. And this table also gives you minimum uh, cable thickness for the amount of cable you have. Keep in mind that if the Bow Pro is three meters away from the battery bank, it's six meters of cable to and back from the Bow Pro. Uh, and it's always a good idea to keep these cables as short as possible and as thick as possible. The, the table gives you minimum thickness. The same applies for the cable for the boost function. The boost function is the 12 volt feed, so from ship's battery 12 volt to the bow pro. Um, that typically is a slightly longer cable, for instance from engine, uh, engine bay to the bow pro. And this table tells you how thick that cable should be. And again, keep in mind that if the bow pro is 5 meters away from the engine, it's 10 meters of cable. This table tells you what the minimum dimension should be. And keep in mind that that 12 volt should be directly connected to a battery. Uh, don't put a battery isolator or anything in between. The Bow Pro needs to feel the presence of that battery in order to start charging. It's got a built-in protection. It won't drain the other battery. If the other battery isn't charged, the Bow Pro won't convert for power. But more on that once we start installing the batteries. So now we've got the full package complete. We know which bow thruster to select, we know the size of the battery bank of the cabling, it's time to start our, time to start our install. It's time to start building our system. Step one is the network, now more on the battery bank later, but here I've got my 12 volt ship side battery, for instance underneath the dashboard. I've got a standard 12 volt power supply and I'm using a network cable to go from power supply to one of the control panels. From the control panel with another standard cable, straight to the thruster. And the network always ends with a resistor, a terminator. I switched on the power supply. 
Now with two pushes on the on button, the system will start up. And let's see if the system actually works. Now if I rotate the button, the propeller starts turning. I'm switching off by pushing the off button for five seconds. So to start the network, it's two pushes on the on button. To switch off, keep the button, the power button depressed for five seconds. Now to build a network, you have to start with a 12 volt power supply and make sure that that power supply uh, is 12 volt. Either from a 24 volt bank to 12 volt with a converter or use 12 volt from one of the 12, 24 volt battery banks. But make sure that you connect the network to the common negative bar uh, so everything runs on the same negative side. For the battery bank, I'm going to change the camera position a bit so you can have a better look at it. So Let's look at the battery bank in a bit more details. I've got two battery banks here. This is my 12 volt ship's battery and this is the 24 volt bank for my Bowpro. So normally this one would be installed close to the engine bay, for instance to start the ship's engine. This one will be mounted, this battery bank will be mounted close to the Bowpro to keep the cables short. Couple of things to think about, if you use the boost function, you have to connect the common negative terminal from this battery to the negative terminal from the 12 volt battery. So the 24 volt bank should be connected to the 12 volt bank, otherwise the network and the boost function won't work. The network needs to be powered with 12 volts. Now, we had a 12 volt boat, so I've hooked up my network power to the 12 volt bank. If you only have 24 volt on the ship, the best way to generate 12 volt is with a voltage converter. Uh, the network takes very little power, the smallest converter is big enough to go from 24 volts to 12 volts to power the network. Um, you can take 12 volt from a 24 volt bank. I've got two 12 volt batteries, so I can measure 12 volt here, and I can measure 12 volt on this battery bank. To power the network, I have to use this battery because this one has the common negative terminal. If I'm getting 12 volt from this battery, it will be 12 volt, uh, but the network won't run stable. I need to use this battery bank. Normally, you don't want to take 12 volt from a 24 volt bank because this battery will be discharged slightly further than this one, causing this one to age prematurely and to cause imbalances while charging. But the network, the power consumption from the network is so small that you can take 12 volt from a battery bank, but make sure that you use the one with the common uh, negative terminal. From my battery, I've run a cable straight up to the Bowpro. This needs to be a direct connection. Don't put a battery switch or a battery insulator uh, in between. As soon as the Bowpro feels that this battery is being charged, the Bowpro will now start charging uh, the 12 volt, sorry, the 24 volt battery bank. If the Bowpro doesn't feel that the other battery is being charged, it won't consume any energy. So you can run a direct connection from the Bowpro to the 12 volt battery. As soon as this one is being charged by a shore based charger or by the ship's engine, the Bowpro will convert it into 24 volt to charge the dedicated battery bank. If I'm extending my system with a stern thruster, there's a couple of additional steps that I must take. Step one, I have to tell the stern thruster that it's actually a stern thruster. To do that, you remove the blue cover with the four screws on the corners, remove the cover, there's a small switch underneath that says stern thruster, and then this one is programmed to be a stern thruster. Second step, I have to extend the network, so I'm removing this network terminator, plugging in a standard network cable, I'm running it to my stern thruster, and I have to terminate it with the resistor. The third step is the common negative terminal from this battery bank to this battery bank. It's out of sight for you, but on the floor is a cable which runs from this battery bank to this battery bank, connecting the negative terminals. And that's enough to install the stern thruster. Now to switch on the system, I'm pushing the on button twice. And now if I rotate the button, both propellers start turning. And with this button, I can either use the bow thruster, the stern thruster, 
or operate them both at the same time, which is a perfect way to control your boat. Thanks for your time and attention, and I wish you a lot of successful builds.